What is going on? It is Aaron from Rudy Visuals and in today's video we're going to check out the new update to Luminar 4, Luminar 4.2 and check out its new features. So I'll see you after that intro. Okay, so for those of you who maybe haven't heard of this before, Luminar 4 is basically an alternative to Lightroom and Photoshop. It's a really, really easy to use photo editing software that's kind of designed for sort of newcomers. This is because it takes away a lot of that learning difficulty that comes with photo editing and basically replaces everything with easy to use sliders to make everything as accessible as possible for people who are maybe new to photo editing and new to photography. If you'd like to know more about Luminar 4, you can check out the full first impressions video that we did a few months ago in the description box below. Now, last month, Luminar actually had a really big update, the 4.2 update, and we actually haven't had a lot of chances to try it out. We've got a little bit of time on our hands to try it out. So today, we're gonna go check it out. So let's jump into Luminar itself. Okay, so here I have Luminar 4.2 opened up uh, on my desktop here. And the very, very first thing that I would like to show you, probably the biggest, coolest update to Luminar 4.2 is the AI Augmented Sky. So we all know about the sky replacement tool. We've seen this in the last update, so where it basically analyzes your photo, looks for the sky, and then you can literally, with a click of a button, change the look of your sky to give it a more dramatic look. You can play around with the settings to make this look more realistic and blend things in a little bit better. But this is a really, really cool and interesting tool. Now, what I'd like to show you in the new update is this awesome new tool called AI Augmented Sky. Now, what this essentially does is it allows you to place an object within your photo. So for example, if I wanted to add some mountains, for example, with a click of a button, voila, you have a bunch of mountains added into your photo. And the very cool thing about this is, as you can see, it automatically creates this layer behind the actual things that are in your photo. And it, you can actually move this around, play around with it and tinker uh, to suit your photo. But it's really cool how it automatically scans the things and objects in your photo and creates that layer. Now this can be done in Photoshop, I believe it can be done in other software like GIMP and things like that, but it does require a little bit of know-how, a little bit of knowledge, so if you are completely new to photo editing, this is going to save you so much time and effort. Now of course there are settings you can play with, for example, uh, the amount, which basically changes the opacity, the warmth and the relight, so you can change how the way lights and colors fall upon that. And there's some more advanced settings as well, like refining the mask and defocusing. If, you, for example, you want that to be a little bit more uh, like bokeh and blurry, so you can definitely play around with this to make it look more realistic. But this is definitely a really, really awesome tool. Let's have a look at some of the other things we have here. For example, we can add an aurora borealis. That actually looks quite cool. I like that. And there's other things here, like balloons. We can add birds. Some of the cool things here too, like adding fireworks, and uh, we can add, obviously you see the mountains already, we can add a rainbow. So depending on the kind of photo, the kind of image that you are creating, some of these are going to be really useful to manipulate and create really cool looking photos. Now there's also a load custom image option, so if you want to add your own images, uh, you can also do that as well. I'll be perfectly honest with you, I probably will not be using this tool to make my images look better because as a portrait photographer I want to make it look as realistic as possible so obviously this isn't going to be the best for like realism however what I do see this being useful for is for people who are maybe making digital art making uh, thumbnails making graphics for websites for social media posts uh, for thumbnails Instagram that kind of thing I can definitely see this being super useful for. Now as I said before this can also be done in Photoshop but the fact that you can do this with a single click with very very easy simple controls makes this so useful. So for people who don't actually have the time to learn Photoshop, learn how to use masks and layers, this can save so much time and I can see this being really 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 useful for certain kinds of people. So AI Augmented Sky, that's definitely a really cool update. Now the, some other updates to Luminar 4.2 include some extra things in the Portrait Tools panel. So if we go over to Portrait Tools, we have this new 
uh, Slim Face 2.0. So we used the Slim Face in the original Luminar 4 and there were some issues with the face slimming, particularly when the face was at like a tilt or at an unusual angle or if it was badly lit or there's like partially hidden faces or even like heavy makeup. When we used the Slim Face sometimes it would make the, the, the face shape a little bit abnormal, it would only slim like the bottom half or only like one half of the face. This has now been improved with Slim Face 2.0 so let's just see how this looks. I'm going to use this picture of Annie who already has quite a slim face but let's just see how it looks if we crank it up. Uh, but yeah that actually looks a lot better. There is a hand here in front of the face and basically with the older version of Slim Face if there was anything kind of like blocking the face it would kind of make it look a little bit abnormal but I can see this is actually much improved so that actually is a very cool update to Luminar 4.2 and the other update we also have is the shine removal so this is another useful tool so basically if a face is looking too shiny probably because of um, a flash any weird external lighting sources or oily skin makeup that kind of thing we can use now use this shine removal tool to instantly remove any shine from the face so that's another really really cool tool that has been added to Luminar 4.2. Now for me my biggest criticism of Luminar 4 was that it was kind of not the best performing software that I've ever used. It was kind of slow and sluggish and sometimes adding effects and some of these presets and changing settings it would take a while for Luminar to like like snap into place. You did need a fairly beefy machine to get it like running smoothly and even us on a 6th generation i7 CPU, 16GB uh, of RAM and we have an SSD and a separate SSD for editing as well, it was still a little bit sluggish. Luminar 4.2 has some under the hood upgrades to some of the performance but from just general observation, just like navigating through photos, uh, adding presets, and just going through some of these settings and applying some of the settings, I can see that there is a notable improvement in the performance. Sometimes as well I would find that Luminar 4, the original version, did sometimes crash, uh, but I haven't had any issues with that at the moment. So overall I, f I do feel like Luminar 4 Crit 2 does perform a lot better, even like just going through like like navigating through the library before in the past was like kind of annoying just trying to get yourself going through the images like this it would take a while to load up so that for me already is a, a nice upgrade over Luminar 4 so definitely like the way Luminar 4.2 performs this time around. So as I said before, Luminar is just really really easy to use, very intuitive. So if you're new to photography, new to photo editing, uh, we understand that Lightroom and Photoshop can be quite daunting, there's a pretty long learning curve. This is why we definitely recommend Luminar 4 for people who are newer to photography, newer to editing, because it takes away a lot of that learning curve and replaces it all with sort of more automated tools. We definitely understand that's not for everyone, it's not something that we're going to use every single day but for what it is, for who it's aimed at, we think it's awesome for what it does. Now, if you'd like to try out Luminar 4 for yourself, you can actually try out a free demo, which lasts for seven days. You have full access to Luminar 4.2. Uh, you can use our affiliate link in the description box below. If you'd like to purchase it for yourself, you can also use our discount code RudyVisuals, you'll get a $10 discount. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions at all about Luminar 4 or any questions in general, leave them in the description box below. And if you haven't followed us already on Instagram and Facebook, then give us a like, give us a follow. You can also check out our website www.RudyVisuals.com if you'd like to know more about us. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys are all out there staying safe, staying indoors. And uh, yeah, I just hope we can all go back to normal life soon. In the meantime, stay safe and stay indoors and I'll see you on the next video. All right, bye.